what I have learned in New York is just like everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when things end, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. So you can actually move closer to being in your purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Um, But yes, you know, moving from advertising into radio, I took a big pay cut because advertising. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I took a big pay cut. You know, I'm still pursuing like my acting and my filmmaking endeavors. So, yes, there was a lot of stress, but um, I was just going to do whatever it took mm-hmm. and keep going. Mm-hmm. I think as long as you don't quit, you'll still get there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you quit, then you have your answer. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Inside Out Podcast Season 2. I'm your host, Yamoria Wright. The intention of this podcast is to enrich your life with behind-the-scenes interviews and conversations from thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and creators about how they live their lives from the inside out. Enjoy. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the newest episode of Inside Out Podcast featuring the one, the only, Scylla Sani. Ooh, round of applause. What's up? Thanks for having me. Of course, of (laughs) course. If y'all don't know who Scylla is, I'm kind of side-eyeing you, but that's okay. That's why we're all here. We're here to get to 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 know Scylla uh, a lot better, right? Like, the goal of Inside Out Podcast is to humanize the brand, we say. So um, we're going to dig into who you are. But before we do that... We'll get to your bio, so stay tuned. Silas Sini is a versatile and daring artist who shines both on and off screen as an actress, producer, director, and writer. Her digital series, Situationships, which she created, wrote, directed, produced, and starred in, made its first debut on BET Digital. Situationships is currently in development for television with Mona Scott Young to executive produce under her Mona Me Productions label. Sini has wrapped her festival run for her second and third digital series, 161 Feet Under, and Wingmen, which are airing on I1 Digital. She's currently developing a slate of two feature films along with five television pilots, which she will write and produce under her production company, Featherstone Entertainment, LLC. In addition to her independent film and TV projects, Sini has several years of production and development experience working at the likes of Grio TV, Nickelodeon, Complex, Hot 97, Disney, Sony Music, and more. She's a member of the Producers Guild of America. Scylla is also a graduate from the University of Georgia with a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism and Advertising with an emphasis in film studies and music business. In New York City, she's sharpened her acting and improv skills by studying at Terry Schreiber Studios and the UCB Training Center. Currently, Scylla received the Cornell University Women's Entrepreneurship Certificate and will complete the NYU TV and Film Industry Essential Certificate and the Parsons Fashion Industry Essential Certificate. In her spare time, she loves to travel, (laughs) dance, read, and spend time with her loved ones. She reps her Liberian Chinese Trini background proudly and holds down Queens, New York, where she was born and has a love for her deep southern city of Warner Robins, Georgia, where she was raised. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Y'all, welcome Scylla Sani. What's up, Scylla? Hey, girl. Scylla. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. That bio is that bio's juicy. I was like, I <laughs> haven't had anyone read it out loud. Oh, really? <laughs> like, oh. in full. So I was okay. like, oh, wow. Do you interview often? I do interview often, okay. but, like, no one has just read, read my full bio out loud. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> It was the first time for everything. Yes. Uh, Scylla, <laughs> take us down memory lane. Like, so, so if anyone has had the pleasure of being in the room with Scylla, being able to have worked with you, collaborate, you know that, you know, Scylla has a bubbly, vivacious personality. But take us through your childhood. Like, what makes you who you are? Where does that light and that joy that you so often exude come from? Yes. So I grew up in middle Georgia, you know, a couple major streets, like a hundred churches. And I always had this big imagination and I knew I was going to go back to New York. Um, So basically my imagination would run wild as a child. You know, I was very, very focused on school. Okay. Um, I made straight A's until I graduated. It was very like hardcore because, you know, I'm coming from an African Chinese training family. It was very, very much like do your schoolwork. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I was always in theater. 
Um, since elementary school, I would draw. I used to draw a lot. Okay. And I used to write little comic strips and little stories. What were they about? Um, me and my friends. <laughs> I would, and I still have all these things. Yeah. And I used to journal. So I've journaled since kindergarten. Okay. And I still have them all. What inspired you to, inspired you to journal? Was it a book you read? Um, my sister actually gave me my first journal. Okay. And then my dad gave me my first scrapbook. Okay. So I've always been very creative and visual and wanted to create these memories mm -hmm. or take pictures. I was pretty obsessed. Like even like one journal entry in like 1998, I was like, Today I got on the internet and it was really slow. And I was like, and I can't wait to get back on tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like just all this random stuff. Yeah. But it's just really fun to like yeah. go back and reflect. Like I was really, I was really turned up and I was ready mm -hmm. to leave this small town and pursue my dreams. Mm -hmm. yes. What did you see? Like was it the content you watch? I remember you telling me that you all had a lot of black and white films that you would watch. So yes. what like made you like even dream big? You, Cause you, I'm assuming you dream, you dreamt of New York and the yes. bright lights. And yes, I did. And knowing that I was from New York, I always wanted to, even in mm -hmm. those little um, scrapbooks that I had on the back, um, it would say on the bottom, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? So mm -hmm. I was always like, oh, I want to be an artist. I want to be a movie star. I want to be a director. I want to be a ballerina. So it was always something creative. My dad also studied filmmaking oh. in New York and he always had a camera. So he was always recording or he was always taking pictures. And then so I loved that. And then my family members were a little bit older. So we would wa always watch a classic okay. because my dad was very particular about film and he was just like, oh, this is trash. This was like the 90s, 2000s yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. But um, we would always watch the classics. And then on top of that, I was always watching cartoons. So okay. I was only allowed to watch like Nickelodeon, ABC Family and like the church channel <laughs> growing up and Rugrats. I was obsessed with it. And yeah. OK, so I loved watching the movies. I love storytelling. And then when I got into school and got to do plays and, you know, explore my creative outlets, it just made sense. Mm -hmm. And what were some unexpected, as you started to get older, challenges that came along with these big dreams? Sure. So I feel like one for me, I didn't have anyone like directly already working in the industry. Mm -hmm. Like everyone in my family, they did have, you know, um, creative interests. But being that I, I, we were not in New York anymore and I was growing up in this very small town, for me, like having those resources or to know like what to do to submit as an actor mm -hmm. or what to do. That wasn't something that I really was exposed to or learned more about until I really got to college and in the Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. And were there any um, specific examples of times where you were kind of knocked off of your feet when as a creative that kind of surprised you? Were there any moments where that childhood vigor and um, just curiosity was a little threatened that you had to really like buckle up and and get stronger and, and really focus in on that dream? I think the biggest thing was just after I grew up mm -hmm. and could go to college, that's where I was able to explore how to really get into it and really mm -hmm. learn that education that mm -hmm. I we just didn't have those type of resources even in that town. Mm -hmm. like, entertainment wasn't like a big thing mm -hmm. in, in the area that I grew up. So when I went to college, um, there was like a couple things because like I wanted to study filmmaking, but at the time the major was film studies. So it wasn't actually you like teaching you how to use the equipment. Mm -hmm. It was more of like the history of film. And interestingly enough, um, I'll just say it. My um, college advisor said I wasn't smart enough to mm. major in film. So then I majored in advertising. But it was interesting because I made straight A's all my life and I graduated third in my class with a 4.0 in high school. So mm. I obviously was smart enough. But anyways, mm. that's just another dynamic. Did but, that, how did that make you feel? Um, It clearly redirected my path. Yeah. It redirected my path. And so, you know, I absolutely love my university. I went to UGA. Mm -hmm. I had a great time. But I would say don't tell someone that they're not smart enough to do something when they literally were a student. Like it doesn't make or sense. Or when, they, when they're aspiring to do it in the first place. Exactly. You know, did that, did that prepare you, though, 
that because that that is actually like that could be traumatic for some people, right? Some Absolutely. people don't bounce back from that. Absolutely. You've been fortunate to bounce back. Is that something that you ever like heard again kind of creep in that you've had to like, like, you know what? Like, I think it was just a I think it was a racial bias, to uh-huh. be honest, mm-hmm. um, from that particular person. Right. Um, but I think everything happens for a reason. So I ended up majoring in advertising. Mm-hmm. OK, mm-hmm. so I ended up majoring in advertising, which is in hindsight, like, you know, by my junior year, I could have switched to a different major that actually would have taught me all about production and all those things. But I was like, I'm already on this path. I'm just going to mm-hmm. finish it. But majoring in advertising was absolutely great. It still had a creative element to it because you learn how to pitch and create all these campaigns and it's still creative. Mm-hmm. It was just not on a filmmaking level. But at the same time, it could have it put me in a certain um, trajectory Mm -hmm. to just pursue that. But I kind of did both. Like I didn't really, um, I wasn't really mad or anything like that. Like I was still a kid, Mm -hmm. but even still, like while I was in college, um, I had opportunities, you know, my family was like, Oh, like they were in Atlanta. They were like, Hey, do this extra work in Atlanta. Like, this is how you'll be an actor. Like just skip school and go. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I think a couple of times, like I would tell like my acting teacher, like, hey, I, I, I'm I, going to be on set like, <laughs> and I was going to be an extra. So I would do like different extra stuff on extra things on the Vampire Diaries mm-hmm. at the time, which filmed in Covington, Georgia, which was really close to Athens. And so I would do that. And like one time I was supposed to be a stand in for Bonnie. Mm. But um, yeah, they picked me out of a crowd. They were like, you. And I was like, OK. Mm-hmm. But then the person actually came. And then after that, when I went back to school, they kept calling. They were like, hey, hey, come. We want you to do it. But I was like, oh, I can't miss school. And then they stopped calling. So then I was like, those were like some of the first lessons growing up. It's like, hey, you either need to be available or they go pick somebody else. (laughs) Um, And then um, even while I was majoring in advertising and doing all those things and doing well in school, like I did a million internships in in college um different places I started off early I was like a campus rep for like a million other places and I ended up interning and PAing for Bobcat Films Mm -hmm. while I was in college so I was working directly with a production company so I didn't really allow other people's opinions to really stop me I just had a different a trial and error path. Do you think that, where do you think that strength of not allowing people's opinions to stop you comes from? Because there's a lot of people who need that encouragement. And I think, you know, it's, it's so easy for us, you know, independent producers, directors, you know, the whole gamut to kind of just say, Hey, just keep going, move forward. But, but I think, you know, some people need to hear like what that thing is that has made you be able to push through um, and also just continue to like reimagine your life and take different opportunities as they come. What do you think that is foundationally? Sure. I feel like um, I feel like it was something that was built over the years Mm -hmm. because, you know, I just always had an imagination and I did have, you know, my cousins that were just like, hey, like, Scylla, if you want to do this, like you actually have to go do that. You have to show up um, or you'll just be stuck in um, doing advertising for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So you had people around you that were kind of holding you accountable to showing up. They my cousins were actually the ones that initially started working in Atlanta and they brought me, they were like, Hey, come, come with me. Mm. So I was able to have that support. And then, um, after college for about six months, I was in Atlanta and I noticed that all of the actors and all of the filmmakers on sets were from New York or LA. Mm. And I was like six months out of college and I was just like, I'm going to go to New York. That's mm-hmm. where I've always wanted to be. I got a job at Disney and I was like, um, yeah, I need to go to New York and pursue my dreams because I don't want, I don't want to like limit myself. And I know where I've always been passionate about mm-hmm. living and what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And in, so fast forward to New York, um, you started at out of school. You started at Disney. Is that right? I started at Disney. You started mm-hmm. at Disney. What were you doing there? 
I was actually working in the editorial department for one of their mommy blogs. But okay. what was interesting is where I sat was right next to ABC primetime casting when mm. Scandal was like a big deal. So like it, I was always playing this dance between like corporate, but also pursuing my dreams. And I would always be so close. Mm -hmm. I'd always I'd always be so close. So then, you know, I get to New York. And in that first year of being there, you know, I finally I started taking really great acting classes up there. I started looking for representation. I performed off Broadway. I did commercial work. I started doing things. And also within that first year, I thought of like my first web series mm -hmm. idea. And so, yeah, I went from there. Awesome. And how important was it for you? Did you have a, a network in New York? Um, half of my family was still in New York. You had so, a family, yeah. but in terms of the industry. Oh, no, I didn't. No, mm -hmm. absolutely not. So everything, everyone that you met was just like on the ground yes. as you, as you continue to build. Stop how did, streets. How did you meet a lot of your cast and crew for situationships? So, okay, let's see. In the first, I guess within the first year, I think it had to do with some of my casting calls mm -hmm. and some of my friends. Yeah. It had to do with like me just grassroots like connecting with mm -hmm. people in New York as most creatives or filmmakers do mm -hmm. and I just happened upon people who wanted to create and we all just kind of banded together and they all believed in it because mm -hmm. I was like hey I want to make a tv show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's do it and everyone was, was your, like yeah that, that's that's really key though I want to go back to that because y'all she said I want to make a tv show you didn't say I want to make a web series yeah you said I want to make a tv show yeah I want to make. that's a TV very show. intentionality is really important mm -hmm. and I think that this is something that um, people need to hear and that I just want to like zero in on when you first conceptualize situationships, it seems like you saw it bigger than what even it could be in that first season or in the beginning. Okay. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Oh yeah. I had a vision. <laughs> I was ready. And like, I was always, and I'll say this every you time. You were clear. I was very clear. Like I, I was coming up to New York for a reason mm. and I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. For real. I didn't and I didn't have a way. Like I didn't have any connections. Mm -hmm. There was like nothing there. It was just mm -hmm. me and meeting people. Um, but yeah, I had like a big casting call. I just put it on the casting sites mm -hmm. and we actually had four thousand people submit. Wow. A lot of people related to the to the idea. Mm -hmm. And um it was just like fresh, like at the beginning of like the New York wave of, mm -hmm. of fresh content that was coming. And um, yeah. It was fun. But I want to talk about the TV show. Did you have this vision written down? It's, it's very different to say, I want to make something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which a lot of people do, and that's fine, right? There's a lot of, of conversation, like, just go out and make it, right? Mm -hmm. Which we encourage you all. Go out and make it, sure. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you talk about, um, you know, Oprah has the book, uh, The Path Made Clear, I believe, right? And you talk about, like, a clear path. What was that intentionality like for you? How did you become that clear on a TV show? And how did that change how you approach that production? Because thinking sure. like, I'm just going to make something and put it on YouTube is very different than I'm making a TV show. Of course. I mean, I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. So I just, I had an imagination still. Mm -hmm. I believe, I had faith. Mm. I had faith that it was possible. And I was very much inspired by, you know, the black and sexy TVs. Mm. I was inspired by Awkward Black Girl. I was like, hey, like, I'm in New York. Let's do it. And like in hindsight, because I did end up taking film classes at school, we made shorts and we did things. I was like, man, like if I was smarter, like or if I had known or mm -hmm. thought about it, like I totally should have done this in college and gotten all that free equipment that they had <laughs> there. That's, that's, that's <laughs> some game, y'all. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I already, I just had a vision. I didn't like write it down or I didn't have, you know, any like thing that, or vision board or anything. Mm -hmm. I just said, this is what I'm going to do and mm -hmm. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. And so uh, upon filming Situationships after season one, what were the next steps to take it? Because I feel like it was pretty quickly after that, that it was on Blavity. I mean, again, yes. this is outside looking in. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it was rather quickly. Though. Yes. So, okay. So yes, we filmed... Season one in 2015, mm -hmm. we launched it in 2016 on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And then we um, we got like half a million views on YouTube. And then I did this really awesome workshop in New York, which helped me get really clear and focused on what I wanted. What led you to that workshop? 
um, my producing partner, Brandon okay. Brathwaite, he recommended me to do it. And um, that workshop was very, very, very helpful. I did a whole bunch of the classes. And by the third one, um, they give you 90 days to make whatever you want happen. Mm. Because in 90 days, you start a new habit. And it was lit. So in that 90 days, I said um, one of my goals was to get my show on YouTube onto a bigger um, a bigger platform. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I was doing whatever it took to do that. And I happened to meet one of the co-founders of Blavity at like a, like a networking event. And I just walked up to him. And I told him, hey, I have a show on YouTube and I want it on Blavity. He's like, okay, uh, email me. <laughs> and I was like, great. And so that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. And then um, pretty much, I think a week or two before the 90 day deadline, it was up on Blavity. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was just very clear on my vision. And then after that workshop was done, I made a declaration that by... January the following year or yeah by the following year that season two which we shot in 2017 would be on a major network or streaming platform mm. and by January both um, BET and Amazon said yes wow and that happened because I had a traveling business card you had a traveling business card um when it comes to that clarity were there any moments that seemed like you wouldn't be able to achieve that in that in the process? Because it's one thing to get it right to be like, this is what I want to do. And then you're how did you stay focused? Because life happens life and there life are just, life be happening. Life be life. How did you stay focused? Because I think that that, you know, that's really something that um, that would resonate with a lot of people because we can we can have a vision. Right. But then how do you stay clear after their family situations or work, whatever, how do you stay clear on that? I think you just have to um, get rid of the distractions. And, and what did that look like for you? While I was creating all of my original content, I was still working corporately. And I had been stuck in the advertising space for a few years, but I wanted to move into the TV and film space. So at the same time, I was creating my own stuff so I could mm -hmm. do so. Um, Let's see. I didn't take work off for a whole year and I took one day off and then they fired me the next day. Mm. So then that summer, um, I think I had I had like more time to like put into what I wanted. And then I ended up at Hot 97 like a month later. Um, did you feel when that and that like that little pocket, they fired you the next day. How did that feel? Or were you just like, OK, I still have a vision. I need to fund yeah, this vision. I mean, I got to get another job. Is I that mean, kind of like, like what I have learned in New York is just like everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when things end, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. So you can actually move closer to being in your purpose mm -hmm. and that's okay. Um, but yes, you know, moving from advertising into radio, I took a big pay cut because advertising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I took a big pay cut. You know, I'm still pursuing like my acting and my filmmaking endeavors. So, yes, there was a lot of stress, but um, I was just going to do whatever it took mm -hmm. and keep going. Mm -hmm. I think as long as you don't quit, you'll still get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you quit, then you have your answer. Right. Oh, that's good. If you quit, then you have your answer. If you quit, then you have your answer. What do you say to people who are like, OK, well, yeah, great, Scylla. I set my goal. And a year came and nothing happened. Well, um, then what would you, you I'm sorry, again. Just, just to, <laughs> just to, just to get, just to dig a little deeper. Um, you know, it's one thing to be able to set the goal, right? It's another thing to be able to achieve it. But for some people, they might not be as fortunate or might not even have the wherewithal, the support system. There's so many things that go into that. So what would you say to those folks who are like, all right, I'm setting my intention. I'm setting my goal. I may, may have my own little 90 day deadline, whatever. And then it doesn't pan out that way for them. Um, what kind of advice do you have for staying the course in spite of that? The biggest thing that I would say is really assess what got in the way of you getting there. Um, Wait, hold on. That's good, Silla. 
That's really good. I gotta, I gotta slow you down because that's good. Okay. Assess what got in the way of you, of what got in the way of you not getting to your goal. Yeah. So there's some mindfulness that's required. Absolutely. Okay. Being mindful, being aware, um, and holding yourself accountable, mm. getting more education if you needed to, um, seeking mentorship if you need to. Um, I really had a huge support system in New York. Um, it was a really awesome creative community on top of other people that were just extremely supportive. So mm. it wasn't just me. So it's okay to ask for support or find your Avengers. Find, I love that. Find, find your, your team. Mm. Find the people who are on the same wavelength as you and really break down your goal. Break down your goal into daily, weekly, monthly tasks to help you get there. Mm -hmm. When was there a time where you had to kind of take a step back and assess why something wasn't working exactly how you might have intended it to? Sure. Um, I feel like. I feel like the pandemic took a major loop for everybody across the board or even these strikes that mm -hmm. just happened. So I think it's just about kind of rolling with the tides, rolling with the, being able to flow on and always being ready, staying mm -hmm. prepared. Mm -hmm. That's what's important. Mm -hmm. Like you got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so when it comes to your current, standing with situationships. Can you talk to us a little bit more about how that opportunity unfolded? Sure. So I think it was just always staying, staying the course. So, mm -hmm. um, yes. In 20 well, first question, sorry, just to back up a little bit. Were you, you weren't done with situationships. You knew that there was more that you wanted from this. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. It was always a build mm -hmm. like, um, to create something bigger and a lot of different things. Okay. But you're loading. Nice. Um, but um, let's see. So we did season one. We got it on Blavity. We did season two. We were able to launch in September of 2018, mm -hmm. which was really, really awesome. It was a beautiful experience. And um, from there, you know, I had been doing like several other series at the same time, finding their own platforms as well. And then 2019, I was like, OK, we have the first two seasons. Mm -hmm. I want to go ahead and build this out into a TV show. And so it was interesting because I actually was working at Nickelodeon. And that was a ch another childhood dream because I used to really love Rugrats. And so... <laughs> Um, it was fun because at the same time that my show launched on BET, like I was in the building at Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. That was funny. Mm -hmm. And then there was like a company meeting and then my face came on the screen. Oh, really? And then everyone was like, and I was like, because oh. <laughs> you weren't really sharing what your, what your side moves were. Listen. Not letting your left hand know what your right hand is. Listen, like, listen, listen. Said. I was, I was doing my work. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I was focused. Mm -hmm. I was focused. So um, while I was in the building, um, 2019, I was like, hey, like, I really want, I had a lot of different things in the works, but I had connected with a really nice coworker named Gerald. Shout out to Gerald. Hey, Gerald. <laughs> and um, we had been meaning to get coffee, like, in, like, the cafeteria or something. Mm -hmm. And it took, like maybe like a year or something. <laughs> and we finally met. And so he got to know me and I got to know him. And I was like, yeah, I want to make a TV show for real. Like, this is what I did. Mm -hmm. Like, I really, you know, I really want to do something. And he was like, oh, really? I was like, yeah. And he was like, um, well, you know, I know someone who could help you. I was like, no, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And he was like, um, I could connect you with Mona Scott, Mona Scott Young. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. I was like, great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so then um, every day at lunchtime, I'd be like, you didn't forget, right? <laughs> he was like, no, I did it. <laughs> Persistent. <laughs> and this was right before the holidays. Like this was Christmas time mm -hmm. uh, or December. And I actually had, um, I had something else fall through. And literally by I had something fall through on Monday, but on Friday he sent the email mm. and he connect, connected me with her. And she was 
like so nice. Like I, I call her my fairy godmother. So on Monday you had a disappointment. Mm hmm. And then on by Friday, you mm -hmm. had a win. I had a win. So like I said, everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. in God's plan and God's timing. It'll happen. You just got to be patient, which has been the word <laughs> <laughs> that everyone loves to give me. But it's great. Yes. So then um, we connected and she was like, OK, meet me in my office in Jersey or meet me in Jersey. So we met in Jersey and we were actually in 50 Cent's office and I pitched it to her and she loved the idea. And I was like, oh my gosh. How did you how did you build the confidence to pitch? Advertising. Advertising, of course. See, everything happens for a reason. Yes. So I know how to pitch. Do you do you do you have consultations for people? What if there's people watching that? I absolutely do have consultations. Okay. Um, a lot of my um business has come through a lot of corporate corporations and corporate referrals. Mm -hmm. But I do actually consult young filmmakers. Um, and I was like, I had been saying to my friends like all week long, like, what if I actually promoted my business on the internet? Mm -hmm. Like, yes. So yes, I do consult. I'm happy to consult with you. Just go to my website, silicony.com, and I'll hook you up. See? And I and I give really good rates for um, filmmakers because oh, I under good. I understand. Look at that, y'all! Yeah. Look, look at God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I understand, um, but yes, it truly really was advertising. Like, I mean, it's all a business, mm -hmm. so you have to know how to get new business. You have to know how to pitch, um, and literally, like, I've worked at probably like five or six of the biggest ad agencies in New York City, and um, I am grateful for those experiences. Mm -hmm. What are some um, some key things that you think some filmmakers could benefit from when it comes to pitching that you think that, you know, creatives might not filmmaking creatives might not understand about just the psychology of it? Yes. You need to know your audience. You need to know who you're speaking to. You need to know more. When you when you say who you're speaking to, you mean like about them or just. No, yes, know about your audience, mm -hmm. know what type of content that you're creating, know where you want it to go. Be very specific. Mm -hmm. So you actually know which direction you're going. And don't be afraid to reach out to those people. Because mm. what I'm finding is that a lot of people are afraid to um, reach out to those people. Mm -hmm. And you should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what built your confidence in reaching out to people? Because I remember you and I were talking, you were like, you, you've got access to this person, just reach out. And I'm like, so long, like really just like reach out like what built is, is that still like a childish kind of figure that you still keep alive in you or what do you think that is I think that is um if you don't reach out to them then you're not reaching out to them so you don't <laughs> have that you don't, if you don't say anything they don't know <laughs> closed mouths don't get fed yeah, like yeah. um and a lot of times people will be like people aren't doing that on the average day like mm -hmm. it's just I because of um the work that I did in New York, like I've changed my relationship with fear for, mm. well, yeah, as much as I can in regards to entertainment is concerned. But yeah, I've, I've changed my relationship with fear. So it's like, do whatever it takes. What is that relationship with? What, what, what was your relationship with fear and what is it now? It's more like any limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also encourage everybody to check out um, The Artist's Way. Have you read mm -hmm, that book? Mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. you done it? I've not done all of it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I have yeah. Because they, they have like all these really mm -hmm. awesome exercises mm -hmm. to kind of clear any limiting thoughts and mm -hmm. beliefs that could have been instilled by who knows who. Mm -hmm. And once you remove those things, like it just helps you. Yeah. What was the relationship to fear that you had before that you had to assess? What did that look? How did that um, manifest in your life? I feel like just feeling like I couldn't make my dreams come true, I mm. guess, or not having the access mm -hmm. to these um, relationships mm -hmm. or not being in the right environment or um, really it just comes down to doing the work mm. essentially and just not caring what people think. Mm hmm. You think that um, the one of the keys and I'm asking for clarity, one of the keys to being able to address fear head on is to be able to further educate, therefore empower yourself. Is that what you're saying? Of course. Okay. Empower yourself. Believe in yourself. Like mm -hmm. it all comes from within mm -hmm. as like an artist, like believing that your your vision and your story is important, believing mm -hmm. that you'll find those who believe in it and not not giving up on it because. Mm -hmm. It could be 50 pitches, 100 pitches. Like, how bad do you want it? 
I love that. Oh, and another thing, when, come on, come on. <laughs> when I was um, working at the radio station, like while I was doing my work mm-hmm. and, you know, we're always creating content online, like I probably watched about like 30 or 40 biographies of my favorite artists mm. just to hear about their journeys, what's what, you know, hindered them, how they kept going. And the biggest thing was that they just kept going until they got where they wanted it. That was kind of the through line that you were like, like it, it, within mining all that material, it's like, what's the thing that makes them go? But it's like that they just keep going. Yes. It's just that they just keep going. Exactly. And and I think also the ability for people to, like you've said, you know, a little bit earlier, to sit and assess what isn't working. But that there's that's a mindfulness practice as well. And, and it requires some self-awareness, right? right. To say, um, instead of like, dang, I had a goal that I was going to get my series or my project off the ground or whatever it is. And it didn't work. My, I didn't hit my goal. It's like, okay, well, what, what were some of the things? Was I, it can be as small as like, I was on Instagram a lot. It can mm-hmm. be as large as I was, a, the people I was surrounding myself right, with. Right, right. So I want to talk about that before we close. How important has it been for you? And um, how challenging might have been to have to like, really be particular, specific, intentional about who you let into your sphere? Absolutely. I do think it's really, really important to be just mindful about who you're surrounded by Mm -hmm. and like, like where you're putting your energy. Mm. Where are you putting your energy this week? Have you been, you know, unfocused or going out too much or having too much fun? Are you are you managing your time? Well, I feel like, you know, we all went through a crazy chaotic period of time in Mm -hmm. 2020 and it's taken time for the norm to resurface Mm -hmm. and that's okay it's okay to give yourself grace Mm -hmm. that is okay Mm -hmm. you'll be fine um and then like with a strike it's like oh my gosh like now our industry was halted but did you utilize that time to write Mm -hmm. did you utilize that time to connect with people um and just making sure you're staying true to that through line, staying true mm-hmm. to you, staying true to your vision and just staying focused. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You gotta be clear about, yeah, what you're, wh- where you're putting your energy. Yeah. Clear about where you're putting your energy. I love that. Cause I think ener- energy is like currency. Right? Yes. Yeah. Energy is like currency and, and, you know, putting it, <clears throat> excuse me, putting it in the wrong place. Um, or putting too much of it in places that are not going to return. And it's not, I think people, um, because of the word currency, they begin to think like it's transactional in the sense of like usury or you know oh, what yeah. I mean? But it's not necessarily that. Mm-hmm. It's it's really about um, understanding that what you put in, you're going to get back to you. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? A lot of ways it's physics. So, yeah, you know? exactly. You know, yeah. Um, in this day and age, like you said, there's been the strike, there's been the pandemic, there's been life. Uh, I have a segment, Hurt, Heal, Joy. What is currently hurting you? What do you want to heal? And what brings you joy? What is hurting me is that I need to get on my uh, my regular exercise and eating regimen. Okay. <laughs> so I will be doing that okay. aggressively in Q1. What is... What, said, um, what do you want to heal? What do I want to heal? Hmm. I want... What I want to heal, hmm, I guess, where this year, Mm -hmm. it'll just be more of allowing my creativity to flow even bigger, Mm. like expanding it Mm -hmm. further Mm -hmm. in new ways. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Not in the same way. Like, how? what are other areas that I can be creative? Mm-hmm. Where else could I be showing up? On top of all the other things that I'm doing, like pushing the needle further. Right. Um, not limiting my creativity. Yeah. And then... Um, what brings you joy? What brings me joy? Um, travel and food. Travel and food. Makes me happy. How important has travel been for your creative juices for writing? It's been really, really great. Like, um, I would say during these past couple of years, I've actually traveled a lot while doing shoots. Nice. So that has been really, really fun and inspirational. Um, I feel like, yeah, sometimes I do. I don't necessarily travel to get inspired, okay. but it's more of like I just enjoy exploring other cultures, being able to rest, relax, recharge. I love the beach. I love water. Like it's just something good to do. Like, 
you know, if we're always going to be on and we always have something to do, so a new project to complete, like, I think it's important to recharge mm -hmm. and have fun. Like, let's not forget, you know, how to have fun. How do you stay present? Uh, present, uh, meditation, journaling, reading the Bible, going to therapy. Uh, yeah. You built those all into your schedule to keep you grounded. Mm -hmm. Um, I love it. Thank you so much. This has been, yes. this has been great. Share with some filmmakers, some advice that you might have on being able to get their project off the ground, um, and building, building into that a marketing and advertising plan. I'd love to bring that full circle. Okay, how to get their project off the ground. The ground and, and incorporating the, the visual aspect, the appeal of their project. A lot of people don't, I, I'm not gonna say a lot, but in this day and age, more people know that. But um, I think it's important that people understand that even from development, you should, you should also consider how you're going to market oh, the yes. project. So what yes. advice do you have? I think the biggest thing that I would say when it comes to your project, like write it. Because a lot of people will talk about what they want to do, but you actually need to have your scripts ready. Mm -hmm. Write the scripts, um, get reviews on it, reach out to mentors, see, you know, get it as perfect, perfect as possible. If you need to take a class, take a class. If you need to read a book, read a book. And then from there, um, just break it down, break it down on like a budget scale, break it down with locations, get your casting, get your crew. Go film it. Decide where you want it, where you want it to end up. Like, did you just want to make it for fun? Did you want to make it for social media? Did you want to get it into film festivals? Do you want to get it on a platform? Do you just want to have a proof of concept? Just really be intentional with what you're creating mm -hmm. and where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you know that, then you can know how to position it. And then you can know what type of materials and decks that you should create. You'll know what type of casting and talent that needs to be in it. And don't be afraid to ask for support. Don't be afraid to reach out to somebody. Don't re be afraid to reach out for mentorship. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to send that email. And you'll be surprised at the opportunities and the possibilities that will come with that. I love that. What do you think before we close is your purpose? Mm, my purpose? Your purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe that my purpose is to create, um, to bring joy and to provide, pay it forward, provide the opportunities to others that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. Like there are some, pro there's a couple projects that I'm making where I really want to give access to people who like me, mm -hmm. who had like no connections to the industry and give them those opportunities at a younger age, like why not? Like we all have the opportunity, should have the opportunity to to do it. Yeah. Um, and where I may not have had it, um, I I'm always happy to extend that to others. Like I love to mentor students at my college. I love I love just to help people. I think that's a really big part of my purpose. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Soa. Thank you. Where can we follow you, check you out, et cetera, et cetera? Yes. So Let you, the people know. You can follow me on Facebook, IG, Twitter, and TikTok at Celisani, C Y L L A S E N I I. And you can check out my show, Situationships. You can follow us on Facebook at Situationships and Twitter and Instagram at Situationship NY. And check it out on Tubi, Amazon, and BET. Check it out. Oh, snap, y'all. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all, this has been another episode of Inside Out Podcast. I am Yamoria Wright. Before you go, make sure you subscribe, follow. So whether you are watching this on YouTube, listening to it on Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Amazon Music, or Apple Podcasts, please make sure you follow and subscribe. And I would love if y'all become a member of the Patreon community because we are, we have Inside Out Podcast swag. And for $15 a month, you will help me be able to keep this podcast going strong. And every quarter, I will send swag to all who are members of the Patreon community. And I have something for you. Oh, you do? That's yeah, so sweet. I'm going to take it out this bag. Put this bag in the bag. So the podcast, um, you know... Uh, tagline for this season is humanize the brand i love this so i have some inside remember i asked you how you was gonna wear your hair oh yes, <laughs> that's why did. yeah hold on center it it's cute center it this way boom, this boom, way. Boom, 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 boom. thank humanize you humanize the brand you're welcome oh, I, I, love cute this. I like this
that. That look cute. That look cute you. in you. So y'all can get more swag like that. That is your gift. So thank you. So much. Thank, you. thank you. All right, y'all. This has been another episode. Peace out. Peace. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go, don't forget to like this episode. Give it a thumbs up or a heart, depending on where you're watching or listening, and comment. I will continue the conversation with you in the comments. And be sure to subscribe wherever you watch or listen to Inside Out Podcast. You can catch Inside Out Podcast on YouTube. Of course, you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, Amazon Music, or iHeartRadio. And y'all, that is not it. If you really love you some Inside Out Podcast, there is a Patreon community just for you. For only $15 per month, you can join the Patreon as a member. And every three months, I will send you some Inside Out Podcast swag, y'all. Yes, straight from the Inside Out Podcast store just for showing us some love. You can, of course, follow Inside Out Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you for showing us love and stay tuned for the next episode. Whoa, 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 whoa. Drop it, shake it, pop it.